Hi guys. I hope you guys are doing well um, and figuring out how to use the Google Classroom online. I miss getting to see your faces every day, but I'm glad that I still get to talk to you guys like this. Um, and I'm excited today because I have a new read aloud book to share with you. Before we get started, you guys are going to be seeing some videos of me over the next couple of weeks. Um, and since I'm filming from my house, you may see my pets in the background of my videos. So I wanted to give you a quick introduction to them in case you see them over the next few weeks. So my dog is part Chihuahua and part Dachshund, our wiener dog. She's, uh, her breed is called a Chewini, and her name is Leia. I have a cat who is gray with orange stripes, and her name is Violet. And this week, I am also cat sitting for Miss Shayla's cat. And he is an all black cat whose name is Omen. So if you see them in the background of my videos, I just wanted you to know who was who. All right, so what I have to share with you guys today is a brand new read aloud, just like we usually do in group. The story that we're gonna start reading together is called Bob. And it is by Wendy Mass and Rebecca Stead. Now, there are a couple of things about this video that are different, or video, I'm sorry. There are a couple of things about this book that are different than some of the books that we've read together before. The first thing that's different is that this book is written in what's called first person. That means that it's written as though the character is speaking directly to the reader. So instead of saying, he rolled down the hill, the book would say, I rolled down the hill. Um, so sometimes that can take just a little bit of time to get used to hearing and reading things that are written in first person, but it's a really cool way to write and a really cool thing to read. The other thing that makes this book a little unique is that it does something called switching perspectives. And what that means is that there are two different characters, two main characters, and the story switches between who is telling the story depending on what chapter you're reading. Now this book is really helpful and it tells you whose perspective you're reading from because their name is the chapter of that, or is the title of that chapter. So it will be helpful that way for us to keep straight who is talking to us in the story. And I will make sure to tell you whose name it is at the beginning of each chapter. So I hope you're ready. <clears throat> I'm gonna shift a little bit and put on my reading voice. Um, the book does not have very many pictures, so I will probably just hold it and read from it. Um, if there is a picture, I'll make sure to show the camera so that you guys can see at home, okay? All right. <clears throat> Chapter one, Libby. I feel bad that I can't remember anything about Gran Nicholas's house. On the table in her kitchen, Gran has lined up three things I do not remember. A green stuffed elephant in overalls, a net bag full of chess pieces, and a clunky old tape recorder. You loved these things when you were here before, Gran Nicholas tells me, but I don't remember any of it. Not the horses, Gran Nicholas says pointing out the window to a dusty yard. Maybe there were horses once. Not the pigs, Grand Nicholas says, pointing out the back door. If I squint, I can make out some pigs behind a fence, but I don't remember them. Not this, she says, holding up the green stuffed elephant. When you were here before, you wouldn't let go of it. You carried it everywhere. You wouldn't let anyone get near it but it's like I never laid eyes on that green elephant in my life. It could have been anyone's green stuffed elephant and I would not have minded. Mom looks nervous. She wants me to remember, but it's her fault I don't. She brought me here for a month when I was five and didn't bring me back again until now when I'm practically 11. 10 and a half, almost. Of course, I do remember Gran herself, because we talk on the phone every week and we write each other postcards. Gran tells me the news of Australia and I tell her the news of Massachusetts. She came to visit us once for two weeks, but 
but I don't remember one thing about her house. Actually, maybe I do remember one thing. I think I remember a wrong chicken. I remember and one chicken was different. One chicken was not like the other chicken is what the, is what I remember. But standing here in the kitchen with everyone looking at me, I don't know how to ask Gran about that. I pick up the elephant. It's soft and floppy, and I still don't remember it. Gran Nicholas sighs. <sighs> she doesn't say what I know she wants to say, which is that we should have come back sooner. On the other hand, Australia is very far away from Massachusetts. If you wanna to get to our house, from our house to Gran's house, this is what you have to do. Drive from Massachusetts to New York City for four hours, park the car and wait for a bus to the airport, take a plane for seven hours to California, get off that plane, take another plane for 19 hours to Melbourne, Australia, get off that plane, wait in three different lines while official people look at your bags and your papers, wait in the rental car line, drive the car for two hours in Australia, get to Grand's house. Now mom's going to leave me here again while she goes to visit all of her friends from growing up. The baby is too young to stay with Grand Nicholas, so she's going with mom. I wonder what it's like here at night. I look at the chess pieces. Does Gran have the white one? I open my mouth to ask, but instead I hear myself say, are there chickens? Yes, she gets excited and mom looks happy. Gran grabs my hand and runs me out to the yard where some chickens are pecking in the dirt. I look them over, but they all look regular. Are these the same chickens? I ask Gran Nicholas. She says they're different chickens, but the idea of chicken is right. I don't exactly know how to ask the next question. Did you used to have one that was weird? Weird, she asks. Maybe there wasn't a weird one, or maybe they don't say weird in Australia. Never mind, I say. I realize I'm squeezing something in the hand that Gran is not holding. I open it and see one of the black chest pieces, a pawn. Then, coming back into the house with Gran, I see Gran's back stairs. They have carpet on them, and I suddenly know that I have bumped down those stairs. Did I ever bump down those stairs? I asked Gran, pointing. Yes, she said. You, she says, you loved bumping down those stairs. You had a name for it. A name for stairs? No, for bumping down them. You called it something... I think she's right. I think I did call it something, but neither of us can remember what it was. Now that I've remembered the chickens and the stairs, mom looks happier. Like maybe Gran won't think we stayed away too long after all. The baby starts doing some pre-crying in her baby seat. Dad and I invented the word pre-crying, which means the crying that comes right before the really, really loud crying. Mom isn't fussing with her because she wants me to know that this trip is about me having a special time with Grand Nicholas and not just for Gran to finally see the baby in real life. I heard mom talking to dad about it the day that we left home. Mom said, I want Olivia to know that this trip is about her having a special time with Gran, not just about the baby. And dad said, I know, hun. You told me yesterday and this morning. Dad didn't come to Australia with us. He's at home building a new room for the baby. He says it'll be ready when we get back. Then I sort of remember another thing. It's something about the second floor, but I'm not sure exactly what about the second floor it is. I'm still squeezing that black pawn. It feels good in my hand. Is there something about the second floor? I ask. Yes, Gran says. The second floor is where your room is and your four poster bed. But what I remember about the second floor is not a big bed with a canopy. I still don't know what it is, but it is not that. It's, it's, 
May I be excused? I asked, already turning toward the stairs. I'll come up with you, Mom says. Your room used to be my room when I was a little girl, remember? I stopped, one hand on the railing of the carpeted stairs that I used to bump down. For some reason, I think I'm supposed to go up alone. I glance at Beth Ann, who is still wiggling in her seat. Our eyes meet. As if she knows what I'm thinking, she quits her pre-crying and makes her, someone feed me, whimper. Mom turns toward her, torn between the two of us. I zoom up the stairs. The doors along the upstairs hallway are open. I peek into what must be Grand's room, where a patchwork quilt is pulled over the bed. I pass the bathroom, where soaps in the shapes of ducks and chicks pretend to march along the counter toward the sink. By the time I reach the last room, my room, I'm almost running. I'm not sure why. Then I see the closet. I still don't remember the bed or the bright pink curtains, but I remember the closet. It's small. The door seems like only half a door, and there can't be much room on the other side. I think I left something inside. Something really, really important. My hand reaches for the doorknob. I know exactly where the light cord is. And I watch my hand reach out and pull it. The light flickers on. Here's what I see. A high shelf jammed with shoe boxes and falling down stacks of old comic books. Below that, clothes on hangers dangle from a bar. There's a tutu with sequins and a few summer dresses for someone a lot smaller than me. Maybe Gran is keeping them for Beth Ann in a long, long time. Right now, Beth Ann is so small she can barely keep a shirt on. One shoulder is always falling out of the neck hole. And if I try to fix it, she cries. On the floor, under the little dresses, a Lego pirate ship sits on the brown carpet. It has four sails and a mast and a lookout tower and even a swimming pool. It must have taken a long time to build. Next to the pirate ship is a thick, old dictionary. And standing on top of the dictionary is a small zombie wearing a chicken suit. He's rubbing his eyes, a Lego pirate clutched in one green hand. When his eyes adjust to the light, he uses them to look me up and down. Then he says, you're back. Took you long enough. And that is the end of chapter one. So we'll stop there for today. And I will be back to share chapter two with you as soon as I can. Bye, guys.